All right, welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. And the first uh, video in the assembly process of the Monogram M3 lead tank. So if you watch the uh, intro video that I put up before, you'll know what's going on here. So I've got the uh, first part done, cleaning up the uh, drive sprockets and such. And um, as you can see, it's got this part that goes on the inside. And uh, the whole idea of this is to allow the wheels to move. So it's kind of this right here would kind of be the equivalent of uh, the famous um, Tamiya poly caps that allow the wheels to move. Now, just as a side note, as I mentioned in uh, an earlier video, I actually built the Screamin' Mimi version, the Screamin' Mimi um, by Monogram, which is the same lower hull and running gear as this kit here. And one of the things I really liked about that kit is its playability because you know remember i was a kid and uh primary consideration was uh being able to play with these things and the uh, um the running gear the tracks and everything it rolled like nobody's business boy you put that thing on the on the bed or the carpet or whatever push that thing along and boy those wheels and tracks and everything would just spin with no problem so that was pretty cool that was an awesome thing for uh, a young punk such as myself because I dug armor I liked rolling them around all right so here is the uh, step number oh this is actually step number six. Now you're going to see me jump around quite a bit because I'm basically going to build a lot of this up in sub-assemblies um, and have everything ready to go because before I can glue the upper and lower hull together, I'm going to have to make those modifications to the uh, to the side doors and stuff. But we'll get to that ouch later. So I got the, the gun glued together and... As you can see, this is a far cry from uh, slide mold technology that we enjoy today. Two halves. These parts are cleaned up and ready to go. Um, so I think what I'll do is move on to the um, suspension parts. All right, so here's where it sits. Um, I got the gun, main gun assembly completed. Got the barrel all smoothed out and uh, ready to go. The top of the uh, gun mount, um, I had to use a little bit, of, little bit of sprue goo because it was a pretty deep um, seam. Uh, so I'll have to let that cure up mm, probably overnight and uh, then I'll be able to sand it smooth. Um, we got all the bogies uh, assembled and I'll show you how simple one is. So you basically put the spring, the uh, vertical spring assembly in place there. And it'll go, only go in one direction because that hole's bigger than that one. So it goes in that way. Then I just uh, rest the wheels on these little stubby axle looking things. And then the... Um, return roller put that there like that then I just take some cement put it on there and then drop that in place thusly if the spring doesn't pop into place just pop it like that it goes right in then I just take a little bit more cement put on the seams Voila, done. And it does come with an extra road wheel, which is kind of groovy, so you can put like extra stuff on the deal. Oh yeah, and almost forgot, 
this little uh, loop device, whatever it's for. Uh, I'll put a little cement on there. And stick that in position like that. There you go. Bogey assembly complete. All right, so the next part I want to do is I want to work on this upper hull. And what I need to do to make it match um, the project I wanted to work on is I need to cut this hatch out. So what I'm going to use is um, this is actually a uh, panel line scriber. Uh, 0.1, I'm guessing 0.1 millimeter. That's what I'm going to use. Okay, so what I've done is I've already sawn through the hinges because I'm going to just basically cut around it and flip it open. Um, I will have to uh, build up the inside just a little bit. Um, but uh, that shouldn't be too hard. So I've got that. So now I'm going to do in between the hinges like this. I may have to sand it, file it smooth, but that won't be a big deal. So I'm going to work my way around that and see what it looks like. All right, I have successfully cut the door out of the side. And yes, it's crude, but that's to be expected. Now, a couple things to note about this. Um, this... Uh, Plastic is extremely thick. I mean, it's thicker than even the armor would have been to scale. Um, so with that, I'm going to clean up these edges. Then I'm going to go ahead and scratch build a new door because this one is just way too thick to have open. And sanding it down, for one thing, it is uh, thicker at the top than it is the bottom. And I'm sure that's because of the molding process since this was done in one piece. Um, it's much thinner down here than it is at the top. So it would be really hard to actually get it, um, you know, sanded to a scale thickness. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cut close around this here. And I am going to sand that down. Uh, that shouldn't be too difficult. And then I will scratch build out of some just white styrene, um, some evergreen styrene card. Um, sheets. I will scratch build a new door and uh, add some detail because basically it's just some strips and this latching strip here. So, you know, it won't be that hard to do. Um, and with the door open, uh, you're not going to see as much of the detail in the back anyway, but I'll still do, you know, as good a job as I can. But I was able to leave this hinge detail on here, which is nice. So I'll be able to, you know, incorporate that. So I'm going to work on that a little bit, and then we'll take a look and see where it is. Okay, quick little update. So I've got the framework around here. It's all glued in. I've already started sanding. I need to let the uh, cement dry a little bit more, um, cure up a little bit more, and then I'll be able to fill in these little edges. So that will be all nice and square and uh, smaller in size. Still have to do the door, but the um, viewport or pistol port, whatever it is, uh, for the door, like that. Um, here's where I am with it. So hopefully you can see how thin I've gotten that. Uh, you can see light through this. It's thin enough. Uh, so here's what I did. In case anybody ever wants to thin something out, you know, if they want to do something crazy like that, here's what I did. I just held it because, I mean, the plastic, as I showed you, was really super thick. So I just held it and kept sanding, sanding, sanding. This is um, 150 grit sandpaper just from the local hardware store. And uh, went down, went down, went down. So once it started getting a little bit closer, then I switched to this. And um, basically what I did is I just put it against the detail here so it'll hold it. And then just slide it. Slide it slide it and then spin it oh, man. slide it slide it 
slide it and just do that all the way around. That way I get even sanding, even thickness. I've managed to keep the thickness the same all the way around by doing this. You know, the first part, part's pretty coarse and, you know, it takes a while, but uh, when I was using my fingers, but then when I get down thin enough, then I start doing this and uh, it's worked out really well. <clears throat> so I'm just about to the point that I can cut that off because I don't know if you can tell, but there is a light coming through there. It's like ultra thin. So I'll finish up with that and then start working on the door itself. All right, one last look at it. Um, hopefully you can see here how thin that is. I'm really stoked with that. I'm really pleased with the way that turned out. So now I can just use a, a cutter, an X-Acto knife, scissors even, and uh, trim all that away and I'll have a nice, uh, nice pistol port here. Okay, well I left off making the uh, viewport for this door right here, but as you can see, it is done. Um, I mean, obviously I have painting to do and I haven't put the tracks on because I'm going to do that after painting. But uh, this is it. For good or ill, this is the kit. So, um, some of the modifications I made, I was showing on that, uh, I did the, uh, the uh, viewport back there pistol port whatever it is uh, that's on there put the latch um, I did you know some little bit of hinge detail I got some bolts bolt heads from um, this uh, it was a piece of sprue from another kit that had a bunch of bolt heads molded onto it so I cut some of those off uh, put the inside the opening latch for the uh, pistol port and then you know the locking mechanism for the door um, you can see here I put, uh, I did some texture with Mr. Surfser 500. I did it on the front as well. Um, I lost one of these little attachment points for these clevis, uh, hooks here. So I scratch built one of those and, uh, everything else is pretty much right out of the box or duplicated like um, Shepard Payne did on the diorama that I'm trying to duplicate. Now, one thing, uh, another thing that I noticed he did was he added these side supports for the headlight assemblies. I was going to fabricate entire new ones, but I wasn't having much luck with the styrene, so I just decided to use the ones that were in the kit and put the sides on it. Um, so that's it. So now I can start painting it. Now, somebody had asked uh, if I was going to do a comparison. Um, I didn't really do a build comparison because in my estimation they are two totally completely kinds of kits. I mean this this one's like from the very early 70s compared to the TACOM kit which is brand new. So it's not really a fair comparison. Um, I guess for its day this was this was pretty good and I still like the look of it. Um, all the angles and and stuff like that you know are pretty good. Um, you know a lot of the details kind of soft but you know, again, due to technology limitations back then, you know, it's not a, it's not a bad kit. It's got some pretty decent detail. You know, up here you can see that it does have some uh, rudimentary texture, uh, but I went ahead and added more anyway. The gun barrel for being a, a one piece um, or a two piece, you know, is not really that bad. It it's maintained its shape. You know cylindrical uh, tapered cylindrical shape of a barrel without being lopsided after sanding and everything so that looks pretty good um now the one thing i am going to uh the one, one last thing i need to do is i need to glue this counterweight i need to see what length of the barrel this needs to be and then glue this counterweight on here because the di in the diorama that shepherd Payne did he had a counterweight on this barrel and this doesn't come with a kit i actually got this one from the uh, Tacom kit, I had glued it on there, not really thinking. I'm doing Lulu Bell, and Lulu Bell did not have the counterweight on it. So 
Uh, I just need to trim this off a little bit, glue that on there. This will be correct for this. So somebody had asked, you know, about the comparison. So I'm just going to do mainly just for a size comparison so you can see the difference in size between the two kits. Now they're uh, lined up in the front and you can see there's a bit of difference in the uh, in the length, I'm going to turn it this way so you can see maybe a little better. See it's lined up in the front there and almost a whole idler wheel longer in the back of this one. Um, width, same thing. Um, lined up on the bottom side and you can see how much wider the kit is. Um, as well as height, the top of the turret, bit of height there. Let's turn that. Uh, the actual well, this one doesn't have the tracks on it, but the actual overall height is not really that much. Whoa, that much different. Uh, but again, this one doesn't have the tracks on it, so that would lift it up a little bit, but. You know, you can kind of see the difference in width and length. But again, you know, they come from two totally different eras. So, you know, a, a fair comparison is not, you know, you can't really do a fair comparison. Way old technology, brand new 21st century technology. But that's what they look like side by side. But anyway, so that is the kit. It's done. Now it's ready for painting. So I'm going to end this video here. And, uh, you know, this may get put aside for a little bit because this is going to be like an ongoing project because of the diorama. But depending on when I get the parts for the um, TACOM kit, um, I'm probably going to go ahead and prime this and paint it with the base coat. Maybe do start doing some of the detail painting. And then figure out what I'm going to do for decals because I'll probably use uh, Archer dry transfers for this because the kit decals are just shot. They're ancient of days and they're not really, I don't think they'd really work that great. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching the assembly and the modifications of this old monogram M3 Lee kit. So stay tuned for more. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, suggestions, anything like that, put them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. So for now, that's it and I will see you all later.